Yeah, and, that, and you know, Willie, that's so true. And and I um, mean, you're you're on Sirius XM Radio. You got your marriage show. You got your speaking business. You got your writing business. I've seen you just blossom. But through it all, I have seen you maintain an amazing sense of humor. And I'll have to go back when y'all were. <laughs> you know what story I'm gonna tell is that we go to see Anna. And she's got the pond now, y'all. Willie's from D.C. Willie and D. And Thomas, you know, Thomas, is, you know, he's he, he's a sophisticated country boy. He's a country boy. And so all of a sudden, we just visiting, having a big time, and looking out of that beautiful pond. And all of a sudden, the turtles start popping up, just one by one. And Anna says, "I can't stand those turtles. I think they were eating her fish or something because she liked right. the fish out there." And Thomas said, and Thomas just walks to his car and gets his pistol and starts going pop. And Willie and Dee just ran like, and I said, Thomas, stop. When you have that kind of noise in D.C., honey, you ain't shooting no turtles. <laughs> so oh, I had never experienced anything like that. He was like, pow, 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 pow. Oh, my God. <laughs> We have, I tell you what, we have laughed about that because, you know, here we are, we live in the country in this little town and we got the, you know, country out there in Charleston. It, it was, it was just the funniest thing. And I think we, uh, that's just one of the best memories. We laughed so hard, but you know, recently I heard you at our chapter meeting. I've never seen anybody. I'll call Willie and say, where are you? And he'll say, I'm in um, Barbados or wherever you were recently, Jamaica. Yeah. Because I'm in Jamaica. Where are you today? I'm in high. You should say, where in the world is Willie Jolly? Because you are, and and you stay physically fit too. I mean, I see you working out and I, I'll call you in the mornings and you always are, are accessible and such a sweet friend. But I, I had no idea how funny you were, but I knew you were funny. But tell some, tell, tell our folks a, a good, solid, funny story well, that you love to share. I, I, there's so many, but the, the one that I think uh, many people seem to like is when they hear my life story and how I started as a nightclub singer, singing in dark, dank, sm sm smoke-filled nightclubs, singing songs I hated, but I kept on singing them because they kept on paying me. One song I really hated, I hated it, hated it, Feelings, I hate that song. But every night the club <laughs> owner would say, sing Feelings, sing Feelings. I'd sing it loud and strong because I was trying to get discovered not knowing most of people too drunk to discover their way out the front door. Well, <laughs> things were going great. One night I came in a nightclub, the club owner said, I want to talk to you after the night show. And I told the guys in the band, they want to talk. We've been selling out for six months. We got standing room only audiences. We've won the award, best jazz singer, best entertainer, best performer, best nightclub act. And so we, 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 we're going we're gonna to get a raise. We walked in his office that night. He said, you were great. The people love you. I said, thank you. We made a lot of money since you've been here. I said, yes. He said, that's why it's hard for me to tell you what, you got, what I got to tell you. We're we going to try something new. We bought a karaoke machine. <laughs> I said, but what about my bills? I learned that night, nobody care about your bills, but you and the people you owe. <laughs> so I, I didn't know what to do. I went home and I told my wife I was going to do something else. I took a job with the Washington, D.C. public school system as a drug prevention coordinator, talking to little kids about staying away from drugs. Some of the little kids, the teachers would say, you know, come to my teacher's group. Someone they would say, can you come to my church? Someone said, well, can you come to my company? And it continued to grow. And I went on to start speaking. And then Les Brown heard about me and invited me to be on tour with him and Gladys Knight with the Music and Motivation Dream Team Tour. And they helped me to get on radio. And I got a radio show and it got syndicated. And then... That led to Sirius XM, where I now have one of the top uh, self-help shows in the world on Sirius XM. And then that led to daily radio on the Praise Network, on uh, Get Up Mornings with Erica Campbell on Praise, uh, Re Praise and Rejoice Network. And that led to a book publisher hearing me on the radio, calling me one day and said, have you ever thought about writing a book? I said, no, I never thought about it. He said, let me make you an offer. I said, I just thought about it. <laughs> uh, first book came out. It only takes a minute to change your life. Setback, then a setback set up for a comeback, then turn setbacks into greenbacks, then an attitude of excellence, then uh, um, uh, make love, make money, make it last. And it continued to grow. And one day I was in uh, Dallas, Texas. My phone was going crazy. What's so urgent? Oh, well, urgent, urgent. I call my office. What's so urgent? Toastmasters keep saying they need to talk to you. I called Toastmasters. They said, we, we just want to let you know 
you've just been named one of the outstanding five speakers in the world for this year. Former winners include Colin Powell, Norman Schwarzkopf, Nelson Mandela, Margaret Thatcher, Christopher Reeve, Les Brown. I said, what? You sure you got the right person? My name is Willie Jolly. Willie, Willie, Willie. They said the one from Washington. I said, yeah, then you're the one. But those are big dogs. And I had oh, yeah. a big one I'll never forget. Yeah, but a big dog, if a little dog keep yapping loud enough, big dog <laughs> care about you. So the moral of the story, I had a setback. But when you have setbacks, you got to understand that you got to overcome a couple of things. One, you got to overcome yourself, your, your self-limiting beliefs. And the fact that, you know, sometimes you'll talk you out of your best ideas. Number two, you guys, you got to you gotta be careful about hanging around negative people. Oh, gosh, yeah. They, they will kill your dreams. And when I was in junior high school, I used to play trumpet with a band. And every day I'd go to pan practice, play my trumpet. My parents would say, why aren't you singing with that band? I said, well, I don't know if I'm, I'm able. And they said, yeah, you could do it. And that night I went to band practice. I said, guys, can I sing? And I started singing and everybody said it sounded good, except one guy who I thought was my best friend. Mm -hmm. He was the lead singer. And he said, man, you can't sing. You sound terrible. And he started laughing, and the mob mentality took over. Everybody else started laughing. I felt about this big. I wanted to cry, but I couldn't let my buddy see me cry. So I walked over in the corner and said, I'll never sing again as long as I live. And I kept that vow for three years. Didn't sing at home, at school, at church. I didn't even sing at people's birthday parties when everybody sang happy birthday because I was ashamed. Well, three years go by. One night I'm playing my trumpet in a nightclub. Band leader gets a note, looks around and said, Oh my goodness, singer sick, can't come. He said, somebody got to sing. Willie, come over and sing for me. I said, no, I can't sing. He said, no, I want you to sing. I said, no, I can't sing. He said, you either sing or you're fired. <laughs> Feelings. <laughs> At that point, it became a easy choice. Well, I sang, and that night, people said, can you sing at my wedding and graduation? And it's gone on. I've sung in the Kennedy Center, Lincoln Center, Constitution Hall, radio, television. I've done records. I've been around the world singing and speaking. And as Jane said, we opened a national convention of the National Speakers Association with a rousing rendition of the national anthem because I stopped listening to negative people. So yeah, absolutely. Negative people. And then negative, your negative beliefs. <laughs> 